we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so i want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is christocentric we have a lot of apostle eric nyameche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed see the new testament church we have said is not a continuation of the life of Israel of the Old Testament. The church is totally distinct from Israel. We are continuing from where Jesus left off. Yet Israel makes a good pattern for the church. The truth is that Israel was a type of the church. So we always understand the church better when we know Israel well. So for what purpose did God deliver Israel? Why were they released from Egypt. Now, Exodus chapter 4, verse 23. Exodus 4, 23. We want it projected fully for us um, so we can read. Exodus. 423. And I told you, let my people go, so he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go, so I will kill your firstborn. This is God's instruction to Moses for Pharaoh. Let my people go so he may worship me. Now the he that is referring to Israel. So that Israel will worship me. So the purpose of their deliverance, the, the reason why they left Egypt was to go and worship God. But the ESV or the King James may say it differently. Let's go to the English Standard Version. English Standard Version. ESV. And I say to you, let my son go. Now the son here is referring to Israel. That he may serve me. So Israel was delivered to worship God or if you like to serve God. So we can comfortably say that God called Israel out to worship him, the God who delivered them. In that case then, the New Testament church is also called to worship God or to serve God. Mm. Why am I saying this? Because Israel remains our pattern. Hence the topic, the church called to worship. Now what is worship? Worship. See the English dictionary give various definitions to for this word worship now i'll pick three main ones which 
puts into context all the definitions. Number one. The English word worship means worship. To give someone the honor or worth that is due to his name. So what worship is worth shape. To give someone the honor or worth that is due to his name. So sometimes you hear people say your worships are and all that. They are just bowing to this big man or this great person, or the superior. But when it comes to religion, the English word worship is defined as, I'll bring just to, a relationship between a lower being and a higher being. Now when a young kofa a da ubika siye and I say um kesiye bi and ketwa and tem. That is why the Peters will not accept worship. Tina Petronum won't to me and tias say wobesumbri be because they believe that they are not the supreme being. The son say won't to me your sorry. Sansa would you say won't won ya akesia what your sorry. Worship is a relationship between a lower being. And a higher being. Oh, sorry, oh, hey, eh, yeah, I uncle far a da near Oyaka Sia Pano, any Oketua, and I said, Yawa Bono, no, and tell me. Now, pick the second one as this. Yeah, shed your tossum, you know, a reverence and adoration of a deity expressing acts of devotion. A ye need ye any obu, or sorry, ah, near Wab near Oba, dear no. A reverence and adoration of a deity. You are adoring a God. And it is expressed in acts of devotion. The expression can be in various forms. Some can bow down, some can dance, some can lift their hands. That expression is what we also call worship. The church called to worship. Sister, brothers and sisters, beyond the dictionary, there are a lot of misconceptions so far as worship is concerned. Meanwhile, worship is a vital religious right that is uh, that we must hold with our two hands. But increasingly, it is losing true meaning and value in the Christian church today. Many believers take worship only as a liturgical requirements. Something we do at church for a set period and at home when we sing and adore our God. Another misconception is this. Some also consider worship as a single ministry that God has given to some Christian artists whose performance we are to watch and enjoy. sorry, and sorry, sorry, and sorry, and sorry, and 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 
is not worship. Worship also could be imagined to be that session of or a period of time in a church service when we are asked to take our minds off our needs and contemplate on the holiness and the majesty of the king of kings and the lord of laws and adore him now some of the churches will uh, name this as call to worship. They will describe it as call to worship. It is good we also do it in our church. In our liturgy, there is the call to worship. And sometimes when you skip it, they will remind you that you should have put to worship there. Yes, yeah. I know this woman who likes this song. Song means that the holiness of God is beautiful. Your holiness is beautiful to me. But the character is so bad. So, see, so bad. Nya, 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 the holiness of God is, is something that she adores. But as for her, she doesn't like holiness. <laughs> so sometimes when we go to church, I'm sure some of us, when we lift our hands and we are saying, you can't cry here, God will just tap. Jesus said, uh, look, look at her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so bro. <laughs> God is going through a lot. Oh, he's a great God. <laughs> That's why some of us we can't qualify to be God. <laughs> People like that, you should have dropped some lead on them. So as a result of these misconceptions of wisdom, the dynamic glory of God in the church and in the life of believers is lacking. In a couple of weeks ahead, I'll be calling us to rethink worship. I'll attempt to trace the basis of the practice of worship. And their meaning in the Old Testament. Through the New Testament in relation to the church. Our attempt to show that worship is a command from God, a means by which believers show the acknowledgement of the greatness of God. And commune with God to know Him deeply. This deeper knowledge is necessary for the believers. Total submission to God's will. It that is not being achieved, then worship is not being held. Now, it is worship is also necessary for the believer's transformation into God's image. 
The question may say, or some and I'm sorry, oh boy, a who yamo did you know? Say, obey to me, I best say Christo. And for God to use them through every activity of their lives to bless the nation. Now, and I shall emphasize that in the New Testament, worship is all we do. And that there should be no dichotomy between sacred and the secular. There should be no dichotomy between what we call holy or secular. One day, the pastor was trying to advise this, his elder. And the elder said, Pastor, this one is work. And I saw Penny, you know, said, Sofo, we a ye mejume muasemu. This one, this one is is work. Ah, hey, ye mejume muasemu. This is business. We a ye juma, juma sem. But you see, I'm praying that we will come to that point where we will know that there's nothing like sacred, there's nothing like secular, so far as you are concerned. Now, me bumpa isi ye nina babe du baby ebe unu se abraba ye bo biara se ye wo fi osi ye wo jume mu o ya di ye nina e bum e wo nyango po enim esomo. Because when I'm going to church, I carry the Holy Spirit with me. And when I'm going to work, I carry the same Spirit with me. I don't excuse the Spirit anytime, anywhere. And the I'm sorry, I'm I'm Now, please listen to this. The Christian believer should be the same everywhere in holiness in sincere worship to the Lord. Now, what I'm saying is, did you Christo ni no? As I say, oh, you ni pakro. Baby, biaro beko. Say, oh, sum nyango pongo. Say, oh, fio. Na brabo ni ne mono. As I say, oh, tumi bono nukrem. I di share radian yonyam. We should be the same everywhere in holiness unto the Lord. Baby, biye beko biya. As I say, ya krong krong eme radi. At home. In church, at the workplace, wherever you are, we are in worship. There should be no difference, like cutting between what we call second and what we call secular. And so say, and sunye biya basa brabo mu fe biya mu. So I'll put a comma here. Let us pray that God will help us and lead us into the point where we shall understand the New Testament to worship and then commit our spirit, soul, and body in service to God. The purpose of Israel's redemption was to worship God or to serve God. Our redemption as new creations and the church is to worship and serve God. If we understand it well, we shall please the Lord. It is my prayer that you will you make yourself available as we journey into uh, this worship and the purpose of the church that by the end of the day, we will understand what the purpose of the church is and what worship means, and that will aid us so much in our possessing the nation's agenda. God bless you. Amen.